Embedding algorithms have gained prominence over the last year because of their use in RAG applications, but they actually have other uses, including content discovery. So I've been writing a blog for almost 16 years, and in that time I've written just under 2,000 posts. And I wanted to see whether I could use an embedding algorithm to come up with a little related posts section that I could put underneath each article. So let's go to the terminal and we'll launch IPython, and then we're gonna import a function that I've got for passing my blog post, and we're gonna be using the rich console. Let's call the pass blog posts function passing in the path to all my blog posts and then let's have a look at the first one so you can see this is the metadata that we've got for each post we've got the date the title the tag the category and the most important bit is the body so that's what we're going to be using in this post so we're going to be using the fast embed embedding library so this is written by the people who create the quadrant vector database so let's import the flag embedding class from there. And then we're gonna get a list of the supported models. So you can kind of see they've got a bunch of different models of different sizes and different dimensions as well. We're gonna use BGE base NV 1.5. So once we've done that, let's call the passage embed function and we'll call it on one of our posts, making sure that we put it inside the array brackets. And you'll notice it comes back with a generator. So we're gonna, if we wanna see the output, we need to put a little list around that. And you can see we've got back a bunch of floating point numbers. So it takes a little while to run that on all the blog posts. So I've created a hugging face data set that has those blog posts and then three different versions of the embedding algorithm with different uh, algorithms. So let's import that load data set from the hugging, hugging face data sets project and then we'll load our data set. And let's have a look at the first record. So it's the same one as before. The only thing extra is we've got three different embedding columns. We're gonna be using the quadrant vector database. So let's import some modules from there and then we'll initialize our client. Next, we're gonna create a collection name. We'll indicate how many dimensions our embeddings have by just getting the first one and calculating the length. And then we're gonna create our collection. We'll be using the cosine similarity to work out the related articles. And now we're gonna put the data into Quadrant. So we'll pass in the collection name, and then we need to construct some point structs for each of the rows in our data frame. So we're gonna pass in an ID, so that needs to be a UID, then we'll pass in the embedding or the vector, and then we're gonna put in an, some, some metadata, so that's what the payload is. We'll give it the title, the slug, the URL, and the date. And then we'll run that, it takes a second or two, and then we can have a look at operation info and you can see that it's completed. Now let's have a look at some of the blog posts. We'll create this slug variable and then let's just have a look, quick look at my blog, we'll navigate through, let's find one that looks interesting. So running GGUF models from Hugging Face with a Llama, that looks like kind of a cool article. You can, so you can kind of see how it sort of walked through how to do that. Let's copy the little slug from the end there. We'll paste that in as the slug. And then we're gonna call the search function again. We'll pass in the collection name. We'll pass in our query vector. And then we're also gonna pass in a query filter so that it doesn't return ourselves. And we'll get five results. Let's have a look at the first one. So you can see it comes back, running a hugging face, large language model locally on my machine. So that looks like a reasonably good suggestion. Notice that the most important things here are we've got a score and then probably the next most important thing is the title. That will tell us how, how good the response is. So let's go and update that previous command to pull out the title and the score for each of our responses. And then we can see we've got all five results. And so you can see the other ones are running Mistral AI with a llama. So that's again, large language models, a llamas, Python, client and you can see everything is related to LLM. So I think it's, these, these are reasonably good answers. Let's try another one. So we'll navigate through. So how to run a Kotlin script. So I think I've only written one thing about Kotlin. So I'm curious what it's gonna come up with here. Again, we'll copy the slug, let's paste that in and we'll rerun this search. And so you can see it comes back. These look like fairly random. So we've got something about Puppeteer. We've got something about sample JSON, something about uh, Llama file. I, th these wouldn't be, these are not great, uh, great suggestions I would say. Let's have a look, one more then. So one below that quick stream so this is a stream processing library i was playing around with so you can kind of see i wrote a little bit about how to solve a problem with that again let's get the slug paste it in and you can see this time the answers are better so we've got something about the uh, a python consumer in kafka we've got another article about quick streams we've got an, a, another one about kafka and then finally one about flink sql so it does seem like this technique works quite well as long as you've got some things that are similar to each other but if it if you if you've only written about a thing once it, it can be kind of random what it comes up with uh, if you'd like to learn more about vector or similarity search, have a look at this video here where we went into it in a bit more detail.